three, two, one. Hello. Hi. What is your name? My name is Nikki. And where are you from originally? I'm from a city called Nakhon Sawan, which is like three, four hours away from Bangkok to the north. Yeah. And how old are you? I'm 33 years old. And can you remember what brought you to Bangkok in the first place? Um, I came to Bangkok on 2019 for work. So the company is here, so I had to move here. And can I ask you, what do you do for your job? I'm currently doing marketing, SEO, and wow. yeah, translation Japanese to Thai and English. And at what age did you learn Japanese language? I've studied to learn Japanese since I was 16, so it was years ago, yeah. Wow. And so what studied... gave you a reason to start learning Japanese? It's actually, uh, I don't know, it's, I intended to study the English program, but at that school, I had to study another another language, so I picked Japanese. I didn't come up from like interest or anything. I just had to do it, so I did it. But it's it's kind of nice. Like it got me an, a lot of opportunities for work. For wow, you know. So so you can also write the symbols and everything. Yeah, yeah, I can. And what was the most difficult part about learning the language? Well, learning the language is to actually use it, because like. Sometimes you got too shy to make mistakes. Sometimes you, like, it's super, like, difficult to come out naturally. Like, when you're starting to, especially when I speak Thai, English, and Japanese, sometimes it's really, really difficult to switch between language. But um, you have to do a lot of practice, and you have to be really into it. So you have to keep those languages a lot of effort. So for you to be able to speak. Yeah. Yeah. You also went to Japan? I have, yes. I have studied there for one year and then I have been back for vacation a few times. Yeah. And where in Japan exactly? I studied in Shiba, which is one hour away or half an hour away from Tokyo. Yeah. It's really close by, yeah. And what did you think of Japan? I love the city. I love the country. Everything was really nice. Everything is safe. Back then, I don't know when I was there, but it was really safe. Like, you can just turn, like, keep the engine on in the car, and then you can just left, like, to yeah. the supermarket or anything, and no one's gonna take your car. Wow. It's really safe. Yeah, yeah, so I've heard. And what do you think is the biggest difference between Japan and Thailand? Japan and Thailand, I think the first thing that I, like, I mean, on the way back from Japan to Bangkok, the first thing that I recognized is that people in Thailand, they throw away garbage oh. on the street. Yeah. Not, try, not trying to shame anyone, not, um, I love my country. But I think Thai people still lack of that public mind. So, you know, like they, sometimes they want for their own convenience, yeah. you know. So, like, I just want to get, throw away my trash now. But like, on the other hand, like Japanese people, they. If they have the garbage with them, they keep it in their Area, bag. Yeah. yeah, so I've heard. It's more collective thinking. They think, what does other people think about me? What yeah. do other people think about me if I behave yeah. in a certain way, right? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. And do you ever see yourself living in Japan on a more permanent basis? Um, not really, because nice. I've been working with Japanese uh, since I graduated, so I know how strict they are, and I'm Thai. People, I think people say that like Thai people are quite lazy, <laughs> and I feel like I might, I might be lazy. So my working style and Japanese working style, they're just completely like different. And yeah. They are very strict. They are very diligent. They are very hardworking. You do like a lot of overtime working and something like that. So I feel like I don't really want to like be in, in that stressful environment that much. Especially in, in Tokyo, like I've, yeah. that's what I've heard, that it's really stressful. Yeah. yeah. And is it true that there's like a little bit of a drinking culture that you have to drink with your colleagues? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Nomikai. Yeah. You have to, with, with your, like, especially your, your superior, that you yeah. cannot really say no. So you have to go, or you have to go accompany with your customers, with yeah. your, you know, another company to impress them, you know. Yeah. Wow. It's a part of the job, so you have to actually go and drink with them. And sometimes you miss the train. That's what I've heard, you miss the train, you had to like, you know, sleep on the side of the street. I think that's what you're actually gonna see a lot in, I think in Shinjuku in Japan. You started yeah. a lot there? I have, I have, yeah. yes, yes. 
And was it easy for you to make friends in Japan? Mm, yes and no. Like, I mean, on a superficial level, I think yeah. everyone is quite... That is like my personal experience. So, but yeah, everything is... Everyone is nice, like friendly on a superficial level. But it's so... I feel like it's so hard to connect heart to heart yeah. with Japanese people. Oh my god, I'm exposing my friends no, now. No, not at all, not at all. But yeah, I feel like it, it's getting, to get connect with them, like like me connecting with my friends here in Thailand, like yeah. my Thai friends, it's a little bit dif different. I don't know, it's so hard to like connect with them. Maybe, no, not the yeah. language barrier because you speak Japanese. Yeah. Why, why do you think that is? I think, Maybe cultural thing? <clears throat> yeah. As this is what I, my theory. Yeah. Like they said that Japanese country is an island country. So yeah. people raise and like being that they stick together because they are on the island, you know. So when they are like you know foreigner came, coming in, they yeah. tend to like yeah. leaving them outside of their circle. Even even with the Japanese word. The foreigner is Gai Kokujin, which is outs people from the outside. Yeah. So, you know. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. How many days a week do you work? When, how many days? Yeah. I work five days a week. Five days yeah. a week. Yeah. Monday to Friday. And what do you like to do in your free time? Salsa. Actually, I'm on the way to salsa dancing. Can right I show now. your outfit? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. I am going to salsa dancing. This is my salsa wow. shoes. And so, since yeah. how long do you do salsa? It's been a year. Is it difficult? Um, it is difficult. Like at first, you have to learn all the moves and how, how you to follow the lead. But it's really fun. It's very addictive. Yeah, yeah I, is it? I love it. You have yeah. an assigned partner or it switches all the time? No, in socials, you have to like rotating people, like with people in the, in the socials. That guy is actually one of ah, the socials. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And what is the most challenging part about salsa, about the dance, about learning the dance? I think, I, I think I don't know, to get good at it, like to be able to dance, like to look effortless, you know, like when, when, when dancing is... The styling, right? Yeah, the styling. Because it's like you can, you can do like all the basics, like, you know, like correctly, but you need, you need to be more like comfortable enough and fluent, like, you know, at, at the dancing, enough yeah. to do the styling with the hands, with the hair, with the head and everything. So yeah, you need to do a lot of practice. Yeah. Wow, that's great. And I think when, like along the way, when you get a lot better and better, then there will be another challenge, like like solo, or maybe like freestyle. Like yeah. in, in, in one song, sometimes there will be like a part that the leaders, like, you know, because it's, it's about the leading and following. So sometimes the leader, like, kind of like, ah, I don't have any more moves, you know, because the song is quite long. So it's become like a freestyle time for both, like, for each, like, for both of us. And then you have to do something. Oh. You cannot just, like, stand there. Yeah, exactly. So, like you're yeah. waiting for the bus. Yeah. yeah. So wow. if you don't do anything, then it's going to be a pressure to the, to the leader as well to try to make you to come back to the dance again. Yeah. Like that is, is, but it's fun, it's really fun. And addictive, like you said, it's yeah. really something you enjoy doing. I've been dancing almost every week, yeah. Wow, so. okay. Can I ask you, are you single in a relationship? I am single. Single, yeah. yeah. What type of guy do you find attractive? I don't know. I don't really have a type, but I feel like if I'm, I don't know, I like a guy with a cute face. Yeah. With a great smile. Older than you? Doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. It's more about yeah. the feeling maybe yeah. than about the appearance. Yeah. Yeah. And do you feel that a guy should be able to dance? Yeah, or at least trying to. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Is it true? You, you hear some rumors that on the dance floor there's like romance going on. Is that true or more like a myth? Uh, not for me. Like, because a lot of, like, my, my teacher, the one who taught me to salsa, she always say, like, don't pick up the guy from the dance floor, you know? Then otherwise it's going to be awkward because the dance community is really small. So, and, and not many attractive people anyway, so wow. that's, that's, that's okay, yeah. And is it mostly Thai people who go to salsa dancing or is it like a no. mixed group? That's, 
if like I think I only see Thai people like Thai guys um, <clears throat> from the whole year that I have been in the dance community I think around three four people oh, not that that's much. It. The, the race is foreigners but there will be a lot of Thai girls who yeah. go dance Interesting. Mm -hmm. And how do your friends react to you going on salsa dancing? No, oh, they, they, they think it's cool. Like, they think it's yeah. fun. Like, they, I upload a lot of my salsa dancing video on Instagram. So, they, yeah, nice. they, they like it. That's yeah. great. And my last question to you. Where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? Ah, that's a interesting question. I am not sure. But ultimately, I feel like I want to try to live overseas yeah and I want to go to live in Europe somewhere over there I feel like I don't know I just wanted to try to live overseas once more like I lived in Japan Australia for a, a few months but I feel like I want to try Europe this time and why Europe I don't know I think I think Europe and Asia is have one in, one thing in common is that we have rich history. We have like, you know, our history go backwards and, and it's really interesting to to learn and to see all the architectures and the arts yeah. and everything. It's really beautiful. And, it's, yeah, it's and any certain country on your mind within Europe? Right now, Sweden, because I have friends over there. So I have a lot of friends there. So I want to move there just to be with them. But, um... I also did a little bit of German, so I feel like, okay, that would be more comfortable to be there because I yeah. learned a little bit of German. But I love the, I love Italy. It's it beautiful, beautiful, of course. Yeah. Everywhere, it's like, wow, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I still cannot really decide where yeah. to go, but yeah. still maybe I'll start out. with somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much for your time. Really Thank appreciate it. Thank you so it. much. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Are you okay if I use this for my YouTube channel? Yes. I will give it to you. Thank you so okay, much. Sure. Really appreciate it. Thank awesome. You.